Welcome to the Muxall Open IoT channel. I am your host, Michael Crane. Okay, step eight, install a compact router. Yeah, all right, let's see what do we need here. We need a compact router, small zip dies, row, row, and <laughs> a four millimeter hex key. That doesn't say anything about it being revised, so uh, yeah, I think we're out of out of the supplied zip ties. Okay, so <laughs> I guess I guess these guys are getting as tired of writing this manual as I am of reading it, because I was looking at. <laughs> okay, so C is a small zip ties, which we have nine of them on top of that, and we have no more zip ties, and. Uh, and C is C is not a bunch of zip ties. It looks like D is. When D is actually the four millimeter hex key. Yeah. So I was I was kind of looking at this, and I, it you know there's nothing. I, I I went through here and wrote all the revised stuff. So I came over here, and and sure enough, there is a revised. In step eight, install a compact router. Um, pages 64 through 66. Step eight required two of the components. Blah blah blah. No change. And then uh, secure the router power cable. The new cable tape mounts will be positioned slightly. Do I mean, so if you read this, it says the new setup will look slightly different from the image in the setup because in addition to this it being smaller than the original cell adhesive mat, th this whole step right here should have been somewhere up here and then down here. I, 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 I don't know if this is a copy and paste from previous. I, it's been, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it's, yeah, th that needs to go away. I mean, anyway. So, uh, okay, back to our um, our manual. It, according to the guide, we should be able to just go through it normally. And and I can't imagine. Oh, by the way, I do have everything laid out. <laughs> Sorry. Um, oh, yeah. And, and by the way, this this thing is is like dirty. I don't know what's on it. It's like it's like someone rolled it around and not mud, but yeah, it just looks dirty. It's probably from the built or being, you know, when they manufactured it. But yeah, it's not very clean. And neither is this this mount right here. It's got it feels kind of sticky. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get some uh, I don't know alcohol swabs or something like that and clean everything up before I I put it together. Okay, so uh, <laughs> we're gonna install the uh, install a 65 millimeter carbide compact router. I'm just assuming that's a 65 millimeter. <laughs> it's a compact carbide. But by the way, thank you for this pin. Uh, I should have been using this the whole time. I, I'm sorry I didn't. I can use it to edit this manual, which, <laughs> okay, steps one, remove the, the carbide compact <laughs> router from its packaging and leave all accessories. Yeah, don't need that. Use a four millimeter hex key to loosen the two. Uh, so the, <laughs> we don't need this. We didn't tighten them, if you remember from the previous steps. Okay, so install the router mount adapter ring into the router plate. Okay, good, that's good. So we take the router ring and we stick it in the router plate. Oh, it is, does it say as uh, shown in the picture? Yeah, shown in figure eight three. So we're gonna look at 8.3. This should be step number one, by the way. Now, some verbiage would say, okay, where do we put the gap? I just kind of threw it in there. I guess I put it to the right. So that's where I'm gonna leave it, because it doesn't say. Now that is a type of verbiage you need. Put the gap to the right. Maybe it doesn't matter. Okay, so insert the router into the mount until the taper of the router's body meets the adapter ring. Ensure, ensure the cord extends to the right. Okay, ensure that, yeah, so stick it in the, in the ring. Got it. With the cord to the right. Now, okay. Ouch. I hit something there. Okay, there we go. That's kind of interesting, I would have thought why isn't that towards the front? Well, uh, anyway, I don't know, and and it doesn't say. See, that's the type of thing that needs to be said. Okay, so 
Use a four millimeter hex key to secure the compact router by tightening the two um, M5 socket head screws caps to the front of router show. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. Just say, just say tighten it, okay? Okay, so I tightened it up and I just wanna repeat. I know I'm repeating myself on this, but this, this Allen wrench has a very long handle on it and that's an aluminum base. <laughs> you do not want to crank down on it. You will you will strip out the aluminum in a heartbeat. That looks like it's done. So um, I think these other steps here, I was kind of reading reading ahead a little bit. So this is uh, this is for the Dewalt. Oh, here it is. Okay, so here's for the Dewalt. Okay, so here's revised on page 15. Okay, so secure the router powder cable. Okay, the router's power cable will snake up over the XYZ carriage. Okay, let's see what this... Oh, this is what we're just... Oh, was it? Yeah, here it is. I hope that your setup will look... Your cable's... Anyway, we already read this. It uh, means nothing. This probably actually means... Says more. So, uh, your router's power cable will snake up and over the XZ carriage along... The drag chain and then along the back of the X rail until it finally exits over the Y2 carriage. Um, position the XZ carriage with router about six inches from the Y2 carriage. Huh? What? Did I miss something? Is there more steps in here that I'm just missing? Okay, required tools, additional confirmed tension. No, that's it. This is, this says nothing. This is, well, I don't know. This is. This, this paragraph is meaningless to what we're trying to do, you know, but you know, I get it. You know, they, the, the picture, actually this picture right here kind of says it all, all right? You just want the, um, the power cable to uh, snake along and go down, looks like the Y2 side and uh, go out. But uh, let me, I'm gonna read a little bit ahead, hold on. Okay, so on this step, they, uh, they, they, they want us to push the router down until it's even with the bottom of the, the X carriage. Not exactly sure what that means. <laughs> I just pushed it all the way down. In fact, they had a previous step where they said to push it all the way down. So I, I, I don't know what that means um, until, until it's even with the bottom of the X carriage. And if you look at their picture, I don't know what that means. So anyway, um, I'm just gonna ignore it. So uh, secure the power cord to the top right of the standoff. Okay, so push it all the way down so you can measure how far this cord needs to stretch out. And you probably don't want it to pull very hard on the strain relief, so okay. <laughs> That's doable. And then secure the power cord with the, the eight missing uh, zip, zip ties as shown in figure eight, nine. That'll be easy enough, and they also want you to secure it to the drag chain. Okay, I'm securing the power cord zip ties right it through the cutout at the top of the white carriage. Okay, yeah, right, right there. Okay, and then trim all ends of the zip ties with a pair of flush cut pliers. Now, okay, so, uh, I mean, this is good. This is short. This is, up here was probably not right, but I mean, they should have just said push it all the way down. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, the picture is good. Um, so you can see it's tied up here at the top, and then it's coming down, and it's just been tied all along this um, this uh, drag chain right here, right? So it's you know, so you want it to when the router is over here, you want it, you don't want it to um, you know get bound up in in the drag chain and or you know get caught up. You don't want to flip-flopping around. You don't have to follow the drag chain. It'd be kind of nice if it was actually in the drag chain, but um, uh, yeah, I, that, I guess for some reason they decided not to do that. I'm not exactly sure why either. It seemed like it would be fairly simple just to stick it through the drag chain, but I don't know, maybe they didn't want to run power in there with it. So, okay. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and start that, or get, I'll just do it, and I'll show you when I'm done. The manual did say to mount it to the top X carriage, right? But there is nowhere to mount this thing on the X carriage. There's really nowhere to mount it on the 
on the motor. And I'm not really sure how hot this motor gets. It probably doesn't get too hot since it's just the Z, the Z axis. So what I did, I don't know if you can see it or not, is I put, so it has, these are the, the, the threads for the, um, the screws holding the motor together. They don't go all the way up to the top, as you can see. The screws are from the other side. So I just found a screw that would fit. I'm sorry, I don't know what size it is, 440 or something like that, or that's probably not that big. But um, anyway, um, <clears throat> I just found something that'd fit, screwed it in the top, and then used a zip tie to hold a zip tie to hold the cable. And that seems to work. You can't really, well, if the screw was longer, I could have zip tied the cable directly to the screw, but in my case, I couldn't. So um, let me see if I can show it. a better picture of it. Yeah, so see, um, I had to put a zip tie that held the zip tie, right? And uh, anyway, as we call that old shade tree mechanicing. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, so once I was able to get that specified the way they wanted it in the manual, then I just kind of brought it down here and started tie strapping to the drag chain. And I, I did about every five lengths. Let me back up here so and get a good look at it. Yeah, and I, and so I moved the uh, router all the way over to the right, or the, <laughs> let's call it the Y1 axis, right? Uh, to see where, you know, I needed to drop the the cord down because I, I, they want it in the middle, right? So this thing, when it's moving, it, it moves with the chain. As you can see, it kind of, it doesn't let it bend too well, as long as it doesn't get bound up, right? That's all that counts. There you go. Yeah, makes it all the way over there. Makes it to both sides. Everything looks okay. You know, the power cord looks okay. Everything seems to be okay. Now, I didn't tighten these things up very much. Um, you know, they're just snug. Because I, I wasn't sure what it was going to do to this drag train. It's, it's just a plastic thing, right? The plastic cable management deal. And, uh, oh, last thing I wanted to show you is, um, is down here. So, <laughs> so one of the previous steps, I, you know, I told you to go ahead and tie these things up. Well, now they want us to tie the, you know, the power cable up, right? So what I did is I just slid another tie strap around the tie strap. I didn't do it around the wires because I didn't, don't want to add more strain to those wires. I just wanted to point that out, so I, I slid the tie strap under the under the tie strap to hold the power cable, right? Because I can crimp down on that pretty hard. This power cable is, is well protected, the wires in it. So, um, yeah, so I'll finish up and I'll be back. Okay, cable management is done. And looks pretty good. And one, one of the zip ties I used... I don't know if you call it strain relief, but uh, you know, if this thing gets yanked on, I don't want it yanking the whole wire right there. So this zip tie right here just keeps it from, from pulling out. It's probably got a term. I don't think it's strain relief. I don't remember off the top of my head. If I remember later, I'll add it in the video, but it's just slipping my mind right now. So, okay, that's uh, the cable management. It looks looks pretty good. So, uh, okay. Don't forget, you can support the Muxall Open IoT channel by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.